Next is the approval of the minutes from our last Common Council meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. There are no resignations, there are no council appointments, and there's no confirmation of council appointments needed. So then we'll go on to the public forum. City Clerk. Uh, yes, we have two this evening. The first would be Colin Catchell. Can I get your home address, please? Uh, 321 Bluff Avenue. And you might want to move the mic up just a little so okay. we can catch. Is that better? And yeah, that's great. Yes. You have five minutes. Okay. Uh, I'd like to speak one last time, and I believe you all know what the topic pertains to, the armory. Uh, the armory battle is ideological. The battle is not only local but national. Anything shared for the public, good, or quality of life has to be demonized or destroyed in order to make room for private profit. The sooner the armory is down, the sooner we can forget about the fact that this public service was ever provided for 65 years. I feel like I have never failed at something I put my mind to except for trying to make this city a better place. My parents always told me to leave the world a better place, but that seems to be impossible in this town lately. The Armory Foundation was full of positive professional individuals who were blatantly pushed to the side to make room for private interests. I believe the Armory Foundation was pushed away, pushed away because you knew we would succeed. That is why we were not allowed a short-term lease this spring, summer, and fall. If we would have been successful, it would have been extremely difficult to convince the public that demolition, demolition is the best option. Never again will a group come forward publicly with as much momentum and positive support throughout the community as we had. This is good, though, because we all know the city operates best in a closed session. To preserve, improve, and provide enjoyment, that was our mission and business plan. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that an event with 3,000 people times $10 equals $30,000, enough to pay for all the utilities for an entire year. We had two national venues planned and arranged that always sell out. The first venue had an initial cost to bring in of $30,000 plus $5,000 for security and staffing. Tickets were $30, and the show sells out to 4,000 spectators. <clears throat> This comes to 120000 minus expenses. The net profit is 85000 Yes, it's a giant concrete cash register that we now want to sell for a dollar. Is the city just penny-wise and dollar dumb? No one could ever give an exact number of what the heat costs were, except for the fact that the heat costs were always exaggerated. 22000 was the largest figure under city operation in 2006 given by Alliant Energy. Yet taxpayers have to spend 900000 to make the Boston store another green space for concerts. It would be stupid to have a concert in the armory right now. 900000 could have run the armory for another 30 years at 30000 a year for heat and electric utilities. <coughs> the armory will now be a building, well, it won't be there, but it will be a building built to build kayaks and sailboats, which will be nonprofit with no property tax income. Is there other land available in buildings? Yes, but this bat battle is ideological. The Military Heritage Alliant Energy Building is perfect for this. It's already on the water across from the Yacht Club's storage and large enough garage space for boat construction. The statement by the seas that they thought about using the armory but didn't want to compete with Blue Harbor or Wild Center is straight to the point. Our vision was never about competing. It was about complementing and to be multi-generational, multi-purpose, and a multi-income facility, just as it had been since 1942. I have a better option to save the city money. Let's sell the marina for $2.1 million, since that's what we still owe. Then citizens won't have to pay 300000 every three years for docks. To top it off, the money was taken from the Eisner Road Fund, and this is where residents had to pay for their road directly out of their own pockets. How about we have the private boat owners pay for all the upgrades, docks, and dredging, and then we'll see what the real slip fees become. The marina is continually becoming welfare for the rich, subsidized by the public. If we can lease the quarry for a dollar, sell the armory for a dollar, why can't we sell the marina for some real cash? Chicago sold the Skyway, we can sell the marina. Five years ago, I ran for our alderman on the premise that no one loves the city more, and now the direction the city has taken over the past five years makes me embarrassed to call this home. The council needs to slow down. The city is being treated as if it has to make quarterly profits. Let's think about the long-term consequences of our decisions next week or in the week following. How are you going to track young professionals if you're going to push away their ideas and make this a great place to visit instead of a great place to live? 
Please promise the citizens that you will walk through and tell, you, tell them that the building is in such poor condition that it needs to be torn down, and if so, why was it in premium condition in 2007 and no one, no one is held responsible for neglect? There will never be another armory foundation. Soon the wrecking ball will be swinging for six weeks this summer, and then all of us can drive by and stop thinking of all the great things that could be taking place there. We all know that next week the vote will be 15 to 0 to do just that because that's how this council usually votes. And for anyone interested, I can have shirts available that say I sold the armory for a dollar with your name included on the back. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. And finally, we have Jason Peters. Jason, could you come up, please? Hi. Jason, can I have your address, please? Sure. It's uh, 1225 Kaufman Avenue. Kaufman? <coughs> Correct. Okay. And you will have five minutes. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Peters, um, member of the Armory Foundation. And last February, I spoke to most of you here. And although I'm probably against the decision you will be making shortly this month, I do respect all of you. Since you've all been elected from the majority of the Sheboygan citizens, except you, Mr. Amodio, you are not elected. And nothing against you personally, but I do not see why a city this size needs your position. We're talking about budget cuts all the time. The roads here in Sheboygan are terrible. With the money we could save by eliminating your position, you could hire two full-time workers full-time working on the roads. Um, but I digress. I also read in the December article of the Sheboygan Press, Mr. Bateman, the owner of Sheboygan Spaceport, calling the people of the nonprofit group to save the armory as crazy. You know what? He was right. I was crazy to not be a person to sit back and just whine about things that are wrong in Sheboygan. I was crazy to try to improve the city of Sheboygan. I, I tried to improve it with the group of Sheboygan Armory Foundation for multi-generations and more importantly, multi-income families. You see, Mr. Bateman, he called me crazy for loving the city I was born and raised in. I'd like to ask him how long he'd lived here. Call me crazy to try and better the city with multiple options, multiple incomes, and how long ha have you taken taxpayer money to use the armory with no income going back to the city? As Mr. Ketchell just provided, we as the Armory Foundation are going to take profits from events we held there to give back to the city. It was a cash register that could have helped the city. It was a win-win win -win for everyone. I told you all last February that we're people on the council that were here who wanted to turn the armory into bolt storage. Well, I could have been wrong. It wasn't bolt storage. It's bolt whatever. Now, 11 months later, I am either a prophet or a man who can see behind the curtain. The reason why some of you did not give the Army Foundation a chance to lease the armory from February to October 31st is because you know we would have succeeded. And people in Sheboygan would have been happy. But... Some of you, I still feel, are trying to create a Wisconsin Dells East tourist attraction town. And I will say good luck with that. Have your golf, your bolt storages, your money pit marina that only 1% of the citizens who live here can enjoy. But then please try to fix the roads without taxing the citizens even more. Because during Christmas, I just got back from Jamaica, and the roads here might be slightly better. In closing... You vote in your heart what, think, what you think is right. But I do know this. It was reported a long time ago that the armory would cost 250000 to demolish. Yet you found out the Boston store is costing $300,000 of taxpayer money to demolish. This is an armory we're talking about. Keep selling everything that is nice in Sheboygan for a dollar. Keep trying to turn Sheboygan into Wisconsin Dells East and soon you will be left with a ghost town for nine months out of the year. Sheboygan was once a great place to live. Some of you are turning to a great place to visit. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to Mayor's announcements. First of all, I'd like to wish everyone here and uh, around the city a happy new year. Um, our, our cleanup for Christmas trees began today, and the Christmas trees we picked up on the same day your garbage is picked up. 
Uh, I also like to note that uh, the application by Two Rivers, Manitowoc, Port Washington, Sheboygan to establish a NOAA Marine Sanctuary was submitted by Governor Walker to NOAA. The full application is available on our website and there's also a copy at the library for people to uh, view. And uh, I'd like to thank City Planning, Tourism and our tourism partners uh, for all their work to put this application together as well as our, uh, our fellow uh, communities that we're applying uh, with. Okay, then we'll go on to a hearing. Um, item 2.1 is a hearing which will be held this evening to amend the city's zoning map to change the use district classification for the property located at 502 North 14th Street from Class NR Neighborhood Residential to Class NC Neighborhood Commercial Classification. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> the hearing will be closed. On the consent agenda, it will include items 3.2 through 3.8. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any items on the consent agenda? Seeing none. All those in favor? Let's see, we have to call a roll on this one. Nice. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to reports of officers. Items 4.1 through 4.9 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, 5.1 is a resolution by Alderman Bellinger, Bitters, Boren, Carlson, Damro, Dassler, Donahue, Hammond, Heideman, Herman, Koth, Lassard, Matichek, Thiel, Van Akron, and Vanderweel, urging the governor and the state legislature to enact the League of Wisconsin Municipalities Partnership for Prosperity Agenda. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 5.2 through 5.7 will be referred to various committees. Under matters laid over, item 6.1 is RO number 200 of 1415 by the City Planning Commission to which was referred General Ordinance number 39 of 1415 in RO number 191 of 1415 to amend the zoning map property located at 502 North 14th Street from NR6 Neighborhood Residential 6 to NC Neighborhood Commercial Classification and recommends that the ordinance be passed. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move the ordinance, or I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is resolution number 121 of 1415 by Alderman Hammond, Bellinger, Donahue, and Koth, authorizing entering into the uh, contract for the purchase of two JVC Pro HD camcorders for TV8. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Mm -hmm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Boren. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, is this an upgrade in technology? Is that why we're purchasing these things? Does anybody know? Alderman Hammond, did you want to answer that? Sure. Um, yes, they're new, and I think uh, Mr. Augustine is here if you have further questions, but these are new uh, cameras for TV8. Does that answer your question, That's fine. Alderman Thank Warren? you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? 
See none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is a resolution number 122 of 1415 by Alderman Hammond, Bellinger, Donahue, and Koth authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2014 budget to establish an appropriation for the purchase of JVC Pro HD camcorders for TV8. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. <clears throat> 14 ayes, one no. Motion passes. Next we'll go on to other matters. City Attorney. 7.1 7 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2015 and June 30, 2016. That'll be referred to law and licensing. 7.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a summons and complaint in the matter of Daniel Gilbertson et al. versus City of Sheboygan. That'll be referred to the Finance Committee. Next, uh, would adjourning would be in order. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>